had such a fantastic time tonight here in Saratoga Springs helping the Saudi Cup team announce all the news about the big race in Riyadh. And the key points, well, it's a $20 million horse race, the world's richest horse race, 29th of February, 2020, a race that will recast the racing calendar and add a bold new player to the global stage, Brittany. And this is how it went. Your Royal Highnesses, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening. Thank you very much, first of all, for braving the slightly erratic weather this evening. We've got a fantastic turnout. Thank you very much for coming here. Thank you also on behalf of everybody involved with the running of the Saudi Cup to facing Tipton this evening for their very generous hospitality and support. And it's fantastic. We should be in your company at such an august, esteemed venue, very much at the heart of Thoroughbred Racing, to launch a project that I think many of you will feel by the end of this evening has an important part to play in a part of the global racing calendar that can be added to. On February the 29th, 2020, we will see the inaugural running of the Saudi Cup in Riyadh, and it will be worth $20 million. It will be the world's richest horse race. Before I introduce you to the man whose brainchild this is, though he will very modestly reject that notion, I'm sure, I would just like to introduce a very special message from one of the supporters of the track, of the racetrack in Riyadh, who sadly can't be with us this evening. Hello, Prince Panda, and hello, everyone. Well, it was short, but it was very sweet. It was, it was Frankie de Tori, ladies and gentlemen. And don't worry, we did get our money's worth. We will be hearing far more from the man who's won 12 Group or Grade 1 races since the end of May, a little bit later. And I know how much he's looking forward to riding in the first edition of the Saudi Cup. So uh, please extend a warm welcome to the man who is behind this project, His Royal Highness Prince Bandar. Prince Bandar, welcome, and thank, thank you. you. You must be incredibly excited about putting the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on the thoroughbred racing map to an even greater extent. Just, just tell us how the idea came about. Well, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight. Thank you for, uh, for coming, and thank you for our hosts here. And as expected, I will call you on. This is not my idea. This, uh, this has been something that um, uh, the whole board uh, was working on for over a year and a half now. And uh, right from His Majesty the King and the Crown Prince, they're all behind uh, this race and they're the real force behind it. So what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> Just tell us a bit about the, the history and heritage of the, of the thoroughbred in Saudi Arabia. Because whilst we may not associate the kingdom with being a, a home of thoroughbred racing, it is in fact something that goes back quite a long way. Well, I mean, horses have been part of the culture of that part of the world for a good 3,000 years now. And as you know, thoroughbreds are almost two-thirds Arab, so it's, it's very much close to uh, uh, our culture, our history, um, and, and our literature. Uh, thoroughbred racing as it is today extends about 60 years in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And um, uh, my father would hate if I say that, but 60 years ago, he was a, a jockey racing uh, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia at 10 years old. And um, the way they used to race back then was so four kilometers, five kilometers straight line through valleys and, and, and uh, you'd never see where the race starts. Uh, you'd only uh, gather at the finish line. There were no saddles, uh, just reins, and they just went for it. And that's how it started in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Um, the late King Abdullah was really the, 
the person who transformed uh, horse racing into an industry, industry in the, King, uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And he was the man behind the facility you see be, behind you. So it is a, it's, uh, it's been on going in Saudi Arabia for 60 years now. Now you have this race day, 29th of February, 2020, with the $20 million inaugural running of the Saudi Cup. Just tell me a little bit about how you want to make this race day different from what perhaps we're, we're used to. What are, your, what are your key aspirations? If we turn up for the first time to this event, what can we expect? Well, uh, this is an event that um, uh, we plan on having lasting for decades, well beyond your or my time. And it's, uh, we, what we hope is for this event to be on the international calendar, to be one of the main races uh, sought after. Uh, prize money will always be a factor when, when, when you come there, but we're very proud with, uh, with our facilities. Uh, I think we have a dirt track uh, second to none, uh, which is a secret that not many people know about, but um, uh, we're very, very proud. And we also would like um, it, it to be an opportunity for people to come and visit that part of the world, um, see the culture, see the people, uh, understand it, and uh, this is among many other events that the Kingdom is, is um, embarking on, on the sports side. So yes, uh, we'd like it to be a memorable experience, we'd like it to be a special experience, and we'd like it to be an opportunity for us to showcase horse racing in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I know you're, you're very keen to, to stress that, that horse racing in Saudi Arabia is, is and has traditionally been very much a, a family pursuit. It's, it's something that all the family enjoy. Absolutely. Um, you know, as I mentioned in the beginning, it's very much part of our culture, our heritage, our literature. Um, but um, we are very keen to transform it into an industry that is uh, sustainable, that can grow, uh, to be at a level at par with the best out there. So that is our main focus now in the Jockey Club. And there will be people looking at this race, looking at the, the Pegasus World Cup in, in Florida at the, at the end of January, looking at the Dubai World Cup at the end of March. Am I right in thinking that you want to be complementary to those races rather than competitive with them? Absolutely. Uh, we chose the timing very carefully. Uh, we think it fits in nicely between those two races. Um, uh, it is close enough to the Dubai Cup, so people who do come to that part of the world can stay. Uh, it's a wonderful area to train. Um, and I think, it'll, I think we were very lucky that we had that opening between those two races, and we're going to own it now. And, and how has the, the feedback been to you so far from the people you've been speaking to around the world? Well, you know, um, we've had uh, positive feedback uh, from the States, from Europe, uh, Japan, strangely enough. But uh, we're very excited to have them uh, excited about uh, such a race. Um, I think uh, we will have to prove ourselves in the upcoming years. It's, uh, we understand that. Uh, but we think uh, we have the right team, the right people. We definitely have the, one of the best facilities in the world. Uh, we have everything going for us. If you haven't seen the facility, ladies and gentlemen, there is a, a, a scale model uh, just behind us here. And you can see that the, the dirt track is a really big, wide, sweeping dirt track, broadly similar to Belmont Park. But uh, you can have a, a races run right up to 2,400 meters just around one turn. One turn, yes, 2,400 meters, um, and you can go more if you do more than one turn, obviously. So it's a, it's a tremendous facility and you can have a look at it there. And there are plans to develop uh, not only turf racing in years to come with valuable turf races, but also a significant Arabian race, plus a, an excellent supporting card as well. But we'll learn more about that in the, in the weeks and months to come. Absolutely. We'll be making more announcements. It's not a one race event. There are several races, all with excellent prize money both on dirt and turf, um, and as the weeks go by, we'll be making more announcements. I know you're going to come and join us a little while, in a little while, but for the moment, Prince Bandar, thank you very much. Thank you. His Royal Highness Prince Bandar. Delighted to say that I'm joined this evening by uh, my NBC colleague, Brittany Earn. Brittany, who have you got? I was giving myself a little bit of a booster here. I'm so pleased to be joined by Harry Herbert of... <laughs> 
Well done. <laughs> who is the global ambassador for the Saudi Cup and a man who very much so firsthand knows what goes into a great international meeting. Uh, what do you think makes a successful and very exciting international meeting in your personal opinion? Oh, Brittany, it's um, everyone in this room knows about international racing and we know that over the last 20, 30 years it's, it's played a key part in the, in the development of, of uh, the whole sport. And International racing, as we know, it brings, of course it brings international horses together. International competition is a fantastic thing and hugely important. But it also brings cultures together. Um, and wherever you happen to have an international race, whether it be in Japan or the Breeders' Cup here or the Arc de Triomphe or Royal Ascot um, and now Saudi Arabia, it brings people together um, and it just is a wonderful opportunity to show off your country, your culture, your racing heritage, your heritage in general. And I think that is just everything about our sport and nothing is more exciting. And I think sort of from a competition perspective, it's flying your flag, you know, it's going into, in, you know, representing your country, but also, you know, seeing what another country is like. And I think seeing what Saudi Arabia is like. I'm lucky enough, I've already been there. It's fascinating and uh, it's a journey and that's what we're going on. The world seemingly is getting smaller. The ease of travel has made each of these experiences, just the international flavor, grow and grow. Now you did mention you have been to the racetrack. Tell us a little bit about your experience there and your main takeaways from visiting King Abdulaziz racetrack. Um, I, I didn't know what to expect at all. I didn't Google it before I went. I thought it was best to go. And I have to say, and I know people here will say, he really would say that, wouldn't he? It? Um, it's fantastic. It is absolutely amazing. It's much bigger than I expected. Um, it's an incredible race, like, amazing viewing, fabulous um, wide sweeping turns. Um, and it's stunning. I mean, this is an absolute true representation of, of what it is like. And um, it's a, you know, wonderful facilities, um, fantastic quarantine facilities, um, literally short walk from the quarantine onto the main track. Um, and well, all sorts of other things too, as we talk about an equine hospital, which obviously has to you know, be seen to be believed. So no expense has been spared in this. And um, I think it is incredibly exciting. And I think when, when folks have a chance to look at this scale um, model, it'll give you a pretty good example, but obviously nothing like actually going there. Visit it to see it. And I would like to bring up a man that has been very integral in the Saudi Cup launch and who can speak vastly about this incredible facility. Please, a round of applause, please welcome up His Royal Highness, Prince Abdullah. First of all, I'd like to uh, welcome everyone here and uh, thank you for attending this uh, launch event of this very special cup, uh, the Saudi Cup. And I look forward to welcoming everyone to Saudi Arabia uh, in early 2020. Thank you, you very much. Can you talk to us a little bit about the involvement that, you know, not only you have had, but so many people go into making such an event put together and all the hard work. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Well, as you said, this is a team effort uh, headed by uh, His Royal Highness Prince Bendel. Uh, uh, something very important I have to say if, um, is that I really have to thank uh, the leadership represented by His Majesty the King and uh, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for giving us the chance to work on this and for really pushing us and uh, giving us all the tools that we need to host uh, a special uh, race like this. I think this is extremely, um, extremely, uh, it's, a, it's a proud moment for all Saudis. And it really is uh, um, a, a gift to all uh, the, the horse racing industry around the world. It's a country coming together to put on this spectacular event, $20 million that garners, garners attention in and of itself. But what do you hope that this race means for the future of racing in Saudi Arabia? Well, this race for me symbolizes what our goals are for the horse racing industry in Saudi Arabia and to what level we want to reach. Um, this is just one race that hopefully will be one of the best races in the world, but we also want Saudi Arabia and Riyadh to be a destination for horse racing uh, in the future. 
And what do you ha- hope that the people coming, the connections that are bringing their horses here for the inaugural event, what do you hope their main takeaway is? Hopefully they enjoy Saudi Arabia, they see Saudi Arabia uh, for what uh, it is, a beautiful country that has uh, extremely hospitable and enthusiastic uh, uh, people. Uh, it's a very young nation. Um, we are, and, um, we are looking forward to host this event and hopefully they can enjoy the races and also enjoy uh, everything that uh, the kingdom has to provide. Undoubtedly an incredible day of racing it will be with $20 million on the line. As Nick said, if you haven't had the opportunity to come and see the model, please do so. But I will hand it off to you, Nick, as I know you're welcoming in a very special guest. I will do uh, welcome our very special guest in just a few moments time. But I was just musing there, Brittany and, and Prince Abdullah, that if you finished 10th, in the first running of the of the Saudi Cup, you would net yourself a hundred thousand dollars. So I'm in the moment scratching around for a horse who I can bring to, to I, finish. I think actually, he, I think he might to, correct you actually. Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Any? <laughs> I, I mean, we could any advance on two hundred. And a round of applause. We're just sticking at two hundred. <laughs> we are at the sales, but not an auction house. Two hundred thousand dollars for tenth place. My word. <laughs> it might tempt my next guest out of retirement, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gary Stevens. Please welcome. The legendary Hall of Fame jockey that is here, I think, I think you're safe, but you are, I know you're looking forward to going to King Abdulaziz racetrack and just taking it in, because it's been a while since you went. Tell me about your first experience of Saudi Arabia. Well, I've won the King's Cup uh, once, won the Princess Cup twice, um, and it's been some years since I've been over there. Things are a lot different now, uh, not only with the Saudi racing, but um, the facility that is now there. Uh, I'm excited to go back and um, the Saudi people are very, very proud of uh, their racing. And as Prince Bandar had said, it's, it's a family day. Um, and um, I'm looking forward to, my trips in and out, literally we're in and out. And I'm looking forward to going there and spending uh, a bit of time. And you were saying to me that even when, when you rode at the, the, the former the racetrack with a, with a surface that, that was laid then, you said how good the dirt surface was. And now we're a few removes further forward. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was great, uh, great surface, very safe surface back then. Uh, but they've taken it to uh, a different level now um, with the sand and wood chip uh, mixture that's involved with this racetrack takes little bit of it holds the moisture, the kickback. Talk to Frankie DeTore who gave us that brief little... Uh, I mean, it was brilliant. It was brilliant, wasn't it? <laughs> That's Frankie. I can't believe he was at a loss for words. He must have been in a hurry to go somewhere, but uh, he'll be back in a little bit. And uh, Frankie's told me that it's unbelievable to ride on. Uh, the kickback, very little. You can sit in there and ride a race. Well, well let's, I'll tell you what, stay there and just ease your way to one side for a second because the great man did furnish us with a few more tidbits than just hello how are you um sadly couldn't be here this evening because of his many many and very commitments but this is what he had to say more specifically about uh, the track i caught up with him at goodwood last week well over the last three decades frankie dettori has won just about every big race on the global stage what about adding the 20 million dollar inaugural running of the saudi cup and frankie you've had experience riding the dirt track in rio just tell us about it yes uh, I, I rode in the old track then they built this new track about 15 years ago around that time and uh, basically uh, is a replica of the belmont uh, very unusual for the dirt track where we have a mile and a quarter with one bend and uh, you know, in, in all the dirt tracks that I've ridden around the world, it's probably the, the, the best, the best surface. Uh, horses can really come from the back. Uh, it's not much kickback. Uh, in general, I ride with only one pair of goggles, and uh, it just gives horses uh, closers a, a better chance. Uh, they, they, they face the kickback really well, and uh, it's a wonderful track. So it is fair. We know it'll attract plenty of top-class American dirt horses. But if you had a, a versatile turf horse, would you chance them on that, perhaps? I, I did have rode uh, several uh, European horses, grass horses on, on it and uh, really adapted really well. Uh, like I said, uh, the, 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 the big difference is the, the, the kickback is not that harsh, so people else uh, horses can face it. And uh, like I said, if your horse comes from behind, you, you, you can do that on that track. Big wide sweeping bend and just over two and a half long straight, so uh, a proper track. And I would imagine, knowing you, that you will be on the lookout between now and, and February to find yourself a ride. Absolutely, yeah, because I want to be in the lineup. 
Uh, I've been going there for years, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm very well known around, around that circuit and uh, it's a great idea and let's hope to get a good mount. And Gary, how important is it for a, a jockey, however long you've been around and however much you've uh, dominated the, the top flight to be, to be riding big race winners across the globe and not just in your own country? Well, I, I uh, find that kind of funny that he said he's well known, known on that circuit. He's the most famous jockey I think we've had since probably Bill Shoemaker. Uh, uh, just recognizable to everyone. And when you're on a roll like Frankie's on right now, 12 group ones uh, in two months is just unheard of. And uh, when you get in that mode, um, you feel like you can pick horses up and, and carry them. And that's what he's literally doing. But the combination of uh, John Gosden and Frankie Dottori is, is something that I'm enjoying this summer right now watching it all. And you're back in the groove after a few years uh, away from the microphone. You're back in the groove as a, as a Fox analyst working here for Naira. How are you enjoying the summer? Well, it's, it's going great. Uh, they're doing a super job and, and I enjoy it. Uh, it took me a little longer to get back in the groove uh, being behind a microphone than it did when I came back out of retirement for the third time in uh, 2012 it was like riding a bicycle but the first time that uh, something a little funny happened in for death boom i was back into it uh, i think it was like race riding uh, the more ad adversity there is the better we enjoy it <laughs> well you're you're sure better at, uh, at this job than i would be at, at your old job i can i can tell you that um gary just just one one final question for you as regards the the specific demands of this race nine furlongs mile and eight, 1800 meters on the dirt. If there is a horse right now in the world who is best suited to taking the lion's share of $20 million, who is it? Oh, I kind of liked uh, McKenzie's race the other day. <laughs> but uh, I've got a feeling that uh, he may be retired by that time anyway. Um, I'm, I'm just, just saying, but uh, I don't know. It's, it, you get horses from all over the world, and uh, the Dubai World Cup, and the Pegasus have uh, both been successful. And to me, th this is a new kind of triple crown that's starting right now. Fantastic. Gary, thanks so much. Thank you. Gary Stevens, Brittany's come to rejoin us. I thought- $20 million, I, I, might it, keep it, it, McKenzie out of retirement. They're not gonna keep, they're, they're, that's surely incentive enough those three races to, to keep the horse in training. And of course, that's another, that's another great angle. What are you most looking forward to? What intrigues you the most about this? Well, it's, one, somewhere I've never been before. Two, uh, the prize money, obviously, $20 million. And I think the international affair, it's so wonderful to see these countries compete against each other with the best of the best. And that's what this race is going to draw. I, mean, I know Prince Bandar, that you're very keen to look after the connection. If you, would you come and have a, another quick word with us? That you're, you're very keen to, to look after the, the connections. <laughs> constantly feeling of, short the, here. of the horses and and everybody here today and and to make sure that their experience not not just in terms of watching the race but the experience of the country as a whole is a is a fulfilling one absolutely um, we would like people to experience all of Saudi Arabia so um, we will have uh, a very easy way to visit there you just go to the website buy your tickets your visas are issued automatically and uh, should you choose to do something other than go and see a race and leave, uh, we will have many, many options uh, for uh, packages, tours, uh, whether you're interested in historical sites, I mean, half the biblical stories are in that part of the world, I mean, um, whether you want to see nature, the Red Sea, you dive, you want to see Madayan Saleh, you want to see the empty quarter, the largest desert in the world. Some people want to go and see that. It's, it's magnificent. You want to see an oil well, we have many of those. <laughs> Whatever you want, I mean, it's all there. So yeah, absolutely. I just chalk Brittany up for oil well visit. That's yeah, the... Definitely not the deep sea dive. I will not be a part of that. Skydiving, you said earlier, we could get involved in as well. There are many sports there. So whatever people are into, um, you can find uh, someone who will cater to your service. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy the horse race, but also explore the country. Yeah, and explore the country. How, how is, is it going to be for, 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 for women at, at the Saudi Cup this year in terms of what they can dress and so forth? I always get the question about, about women being from, from Saudi. Oddly enough, uh, horse racing 
in Saudi Arabia is the oldest sport that included women in it. In fact, equestrian sports as a whole. I mean, I, I know this firsthand. Uh, we have Olympic women riders in show jumping. Uh, my daughter is, is, uh, is into show jumping. Uh, we do have many Saudi women owners, race owners. We have yet to have a Saudi uh, woman jockey. Um, and for some reason, it just that hasn't, is, that hasn't is, been it. That is something they could do, absolutely. theoretically? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I'm almost certain there's going to be a couple of women riders um, uh, during that weekend in Saudi. I mean, how enticing would that be? Haley Turner, Nicola, to get these women out here uh, for such an impressive, prestigious race and to make a name for themselves on the international scene as well as women riding in a race in Saudi Arabia. I'm mean, just intrigued not only as to the, the human participants, but which equine uh, participants will, will take their chance in this year's set. Can I just interrupt? Getting a, Very we're getting, rude. We're getting an interjection <laughs> from, the, amb from the ambassador. Yes, ambassador. <laughs> Sorry, I can't keep me away from the microphone. Um, Tom Lute is with me, and we have, um, it's like sort of hot off, come up, stand on up here, Tom. Um, hot off the press news, because um, having read your um, interview the other day in, in the magazine, and obviously your boss is very keen to compete internationally, Tom, and um, you were telling me just now that the mighty Gronkowski, second in the Dubai World Cup, second in the Belmont, is, uh, if he's fit and well, will run. Well, there's shocking more news than that. Gary Stevens just told me he's coming out of his fourth retirement, <laughs> and he's available. Uh, but now, uh, obviously, Phoenix has jumped in the market on in an international level in a big way. Uh, we're very, very supportive of the international game. Things like this is what this game's all about. We're going to be extremely supportive, and Gronkowski and Axelrod are both sitting in Dubai right now resting and getting ready to get back in full form and our intention is to have both of those runs so we're very excited we think this is great this is what the international game needs we're an international player so we're very much supportive and god willing if they're good they'll be there if not we'll find somebody else wow fantastic tom there we go well got one runner i don't think there'll be any problem with folks running for 20 million but that's fantastic news tom thank you very much indeed and and what, what actually any other thoughts as far as beyond, obviously, your organization and runners? There's a gray-haired guy sitting to my far right over here that uh, I introduced to the Saudi team today, and he said to me, he said, no, wait a minute, those horses are in Saudi Arabia. Steve Asmussen said, what horses are we taking on behalf of Phoenix to this race? So, listen, we're very supportive of it. We love this. This is what the industry needs. And I'm sure there's many people here I see that are international racers. Uh, but if we can, we're, and we'll ask if we can have about half the slots, that'll improve our odds, especially with 200,000 <laughs> down to 10th, that might pay for some things. But uh, listen, this is great. This is what our industry needs. This is what the game needs. And we're extremely supportive. And literally, Steve said to me today, he says, who are we running? And I said, well, we'll find another one. Wow, Tom, great Thank news. you very much indeed. Good luck to Phoenix Thoroughbreds. Yeah, great news. The Gronk is going to rock Riyadh on the 29th of February, 2020. Put that date in your diaries. 29th of February, easy one to remember. But it will take place every year, not every four. 29th of February, 2020, nine furlongs on the dirt. The Saudi Cup. More information, saudicup.com. There are some lovely brochures. I hope they haven't got doused in the storm, but they are just underneath the awning there. If you haven't picked one up, do. A lot of effort's gone into them, and uh, they have a lot of citations from some of the world's leading jockeys. Kerin McAvoy from Australia, Asheen Murphy from the UK, Edgar Prado here, all the people who've ridden around the, the circuit at King Abdulaziz racetrack, telling you a little bit more about what it's like. So, Prince Banda, I will, uh, I will let you have the, the final word, sir. Thank you very much. I just would like to thank everybody here. I really look forward to welcome, welcoming as, as many of you as, 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 uh, as, as you can get. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, I'm really excited about uh, this race. I think it'll be a very special race in the upcoming uh, years. And also, uh, finally, I'd like to um, uh, thank Boyd Browning and his team for hosting us here and all the good work uh, they're doing. So thank you very much, and please enjoy the meal.